Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be comparing the uh, version 3 button panel PCB layout to the version 4 button panel PCB layout. Okay, for the Muxall Pro barbecue controller. I did a few changes, uh, nothing real major, I, I don't remember. I don't remember making any major changes to this. We'll look at it uh, quickly. This probably won't be a real long video. We'll just start from the top left here, and here's the, this is a button header. Button header one, button header two, three, and four. And I believe it's the same. I did, um, looks like, I, so I did add a ground to the middle and uh, I'd have to look at the schematic real quick but so you can see I, I kind of made these traces a little thicker right here this is for ground okay and um, then I think let's see what is this guy right here okay so this is the interrupt pin this is the 3.3 volt input or power and uh, as you notice I, I only unlike I was showing you in the schematic in the schematic videos um, how I, oh, all these headers are tied either to ground or power. You can see right here, there's button header two, that's, that's all tied to ground, and button header three's got some input. And if you watch the schematic videos, you'll know, you know, what I'm talking about. I, I only went in and out. I didn't ground loop. And in other words, I didn't tie the ground to all the grounds. That's why you, you see these rat lines right here, that the software is complaining that I don't have <laughs> all these grounds tied together. Right, and I did that because I'm only going in and out that one uh, trace right here, and I and I did that because of the the microchip data sheet recommends not having uh, ground loops. They suggest just going in and out one point to the buttons. All right, and uh, they really don't care to have this chip <laughs> right underneath the buttons. They'd rather have this uh, left open. I haven't had any problems with it under the buttons. And there's also, there's really nowhere to put the chip if I moved it out from under them. But like I said, I haven't had any problems with the buttons. So, uh, and that is compared to the version three, I think is the same. I, I, I don't think, I think it, um, yeah, that's it. So that's empty. Oh yeah, so here's the power in. This is not even connected. So I, I guess I brought the, the ground somewhere around here. Oh yeah, so here's the ground. Not exactly sure why I did that in the first place anyway. But uh, it doesn't matter, it, it worked just fine. So anyway, I tightened this up a little bit so the power and, or the, the supply and return are pretty much right next to each other. And you notice I didn't flood fill behind the the buttons right here, but I did flood fill outside of the buttons. Uh, that's just to um, reduce outside noise from these, but you can't flood fill. Well, you can, but you don't want to flood fill behind this because it adds capacitance and will make your buttons not be as sensitive, right? It'll add more capacitance to the buttons basically, and, and you don't want that if you want your buttons to be nice and sensitive. All right, so you can see this one didn't have any flood fill at all. It actually works well. Uh, I, I had no problems out of the button panels, but I added this because I was on the, uh, the flood fill. I added this for the noise reduction, and, um, and we'll see how it works out. I, I haven't, well, I tried one of the button panels, but it hasn't been tested extensively. It seems to work okay, and uh, we'll do a video on that one of these days. And uh, let's see, what else did I change in here? Well, I, I kind of, I oriented all these LEDs in the same direction <laughs> because I don't know why. I, I had a couple of these going sideways and yeah, you can see this one's going one direction. This one's going another direction. And I decided <laughs> I should pick a direction and go with it, right? And, and an orientation. So now they're all oriented the same way and all going the same direction. Oh, and I did move the um, little transistor for the backlights from, where is it on version 3? Oh, here it is. Right here on version 3, I moved it down 
uh, over here on version 4. It's kind of out of the way, and plus, I can test it while it's assembled, right? So that, that kind of kind of is nice. And then all these pins on these headers are either tied to ground or power, I think. In other words, if they're not connected, like see, here, here's a couple pins right here that are just not connected to anything. So I, on the version 4, I just connected them to ground. And um, that's it. I, I didn't change, if you watch the schematic, I didn't change any of the wiring of of this capacitive touch chip so it's exactly the same now the components change the values it's all the same uh, yeah just the flood fill and i and i just moved the supply and and ground together and i kind of beefed up the ground you can tell it's a <laughs> it's a lot beefier 30 mil uh, versus uh what it was before which is probably 20 mil i guess come on i don't know why it's not popping up well it's 0.5 millimeter that's not very helpful Anyway, <laughs> there you have it. Oh, we can look at the, the back, which is really the front. And let's see, is there any difference between them? Mm, nope. I, I don't see anything. The flood fill is the same. Oh, I, this is one thing I did is I, I made the button panel a little bit longer. So I'll have to change all the face plates, uh, which kind of sucks. But before, you could not take these nuts off for the meat probe jacks because it was right up next to the faceplate. And so I made the faceplate longer. <laughs> you can see see the gap between them. So here's a version three. That's a little bitty gap. Version four has got a nice, a bigger gap. And so now you can actually take these nuts off after it's been assembled. So, uh, and I kind of moved them around. I think I shifted them to the left or right a little bit. I don't remember which way, um, but that's it. It was just a you know, it kind of make it a little easier to work on and service if it ever needed it. All right. And uh, now that's it. That's, that is the, yeah, probably lengthening the PCB was a, the most major change I did to this board. <laughs> so uh, there you have it. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you later. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal, or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.